If I'm late getting up here, I just had to finish the story. <clears throat> <laughs> President Zia, Begum Zia, distinguished guests, it's an honor for me to welcome you to the White House this evening. Mr. President, our talks this morning underlined again the strong links between our countries. We find ourselves even more frequently in agreement on our goals and objectives. And we, for example, applaud your deep commitment to peaceful progress in the Middle East and South Asia, a resolve which bolsters our hopes and the hopes of millions. In the last few years in particular, your country has come to the forefront of the struggle to construct a, a framework for peace in your region an undertaking which includes your strenuous efforts to bring peaceful resolution to the crisis in Afghanistan, a resolution which will enable the millions of refugees currently seeking shelter in Pakistan to go home in peace and honor. Further, you've worked to ensure that progress continues toward improving the relationship between Pakistan and India. And in all these efforts, the United States has supported your objectives and will applaud your success. A great intellectual forefather of Pakistan, Muhammad Iqbal, once said that the secret of life is in the seeking. Well, President Zia, today, the people of the United States and Pakistan are seeking the same goals. Your commitment to peace and progress in South Asia, in the Middle East, has reinforced our commitment to Pakistan. We want to assure you, Mr. President, and the people of your country, that we will not waver in this commitment. <laughs> our relationship is deep and long-standing. It stretches back to Pakistan's first days of independence. It stretched forward as far as we can see. It's based on mutual interest, yes, but also on shared visions and goals in the world around us. It is based as well on the fact that the people of both our countries sincerely value the good relations and the affinity between us. Our people already work together in significant ways through educational exchanges, tourism, economic cooperation, and through bonds of family and friendship. We have cooperative programs in science and technology and in agriculture, and we hope to explore with the government of Pakistan various ways of enhancing cooperation. Differences may come between our nations, or have come between our nations in the past, but they've proven to be transitory while the ties which bind us together grow stronger year by year. As we welcome you here tonight as the representative of your country and its people, we can say with confidence that those ties will continue to grow stronger and that the goodwill which exists between our two countries will prove to be both true and lasting. And Mr. President, I propose a toast to you, to the people of Pakistan, and to the friendship that binds our nations together. Bismillah Rahman Rahim. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. We praise Him 
and we send blessings on his honored messenger. Mr. President, Mrs. Reagan, Excellencies, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. After hearing uh, such an eloquent speech from Mr. President from you, and having uh, had uh, such a sumptuous, so well presented in such a fine company, a meal that I would perhaps cherish for many years to come, I see very little that I can add to what you have very kindly said. But still, Mr. President, my wife and I, as well as the members of my delegation, are most grateful to you, sir, for the honor you have done us in hosting this delightful banquet for us tonight. I have been deeply touched by the sentiments of your friendship that you have expressed towards me and my country, which I most warmly reciprocate. Mr. President, the people of Pakistan are deeply committed to molding their lives and building their institutions in keeping with the dictates of Islam. Islam ordains upon its followers a belief in the equality and universal brotherhood of mankind. It was the dedication of your founding fathers, Mr. President, to similar ideals that created this great republic, the United States of America. Mr. President, your country has been called the melting pot of people from all over the world. This is a trait we share with you, though perhaps on a very smaller scale. Let me therefore take you back to Pakistan, if I can. Herein lies the Indus Valley, which is the heartland of Pakistan. This valley has been a veritable thoroughfare throughout history. Untold millions, representing all the major races of the Eurasian mass, have made their way through our mountain passes to settle in or to pass through the Indus Valley. They came in all guises. They came as conquering hordes, as defeated or wandering tribes, as mystics and missionaries, as saints and sultans, and even as tourists and traders, uh, both ancient and modern. And 35 years ago, Mr. President, many millions of Muslims of the South Asian subcontinent came together to help build a dream called Pakistan. Thus, we are indeed the heirs to a rich and verified and a rich and a varied, if also somewhat terrible, has arisen in our region. More than a fifth of the entire population of Afghanistan has with the principles enunciated by the international community. The latest with the, with the overwhelming support of the member states. There are other turbulences in our region, Mr. President. The war between Iran and Iraq continue to cause us profound concern and anguish. The situation calls for difficult yet courageous decisions. The most important of these time that the Arabs have put up a unified plan for the solution of the Palestine problem. Knowing your humane qualities, knowing you as a man of God, knowing you as a man of peace, I urge you not to leave this opportunity that has come in your way. I would, I would request you um, to, be, to be yourself, to find uh, the rest of you, and take this bold step, because history will then 
remember you not only as Regan of the United States of America, but the Regan, the peacemaker. The Regan the, who solved the practically an insolvable problem. We in Pakistan, Mr. President, wish you to take this initiative and we wish you all the best and we will pray for your success. Earlier today in our personal discussions and in the talks including our colleagues, I had an opportunity to discuss these and other issues with you. I'm deeply gratified by the manner in which you made clear you are continuing a deep felt interest in the welfare and prosperity of the people of Pakistan and your support for what we are doing. Confidence that with your acknowledged qualities of, of human understanding and with the high principal tradition of your country behind you, the United States will keep faith with its friends comprising of people who love peace and as you said uh, about the United States of America, that if this country has been created, God must have ordained this to be a country of peace. Spread this America, Mr. President, to areas other than the United States of America. Let America be the torchbearer of peace. Peace not, on the, not only on the American continent, but peace in Afghanistan. Peace in Vietnam, peace in Somalia, and above all, peace in Palestine. We wish you, sir, all the best in your endeavors. And you will never find Pakistan is faltering. We'll be there right behind you to give you the helping hand if we can at the moment that you wish us to do so. With these words, may I request you, ladies and gentlemen, to join me in a toast of, in a toast to to the health and happiness of President Reagan and his charming wife, Mrs. Nancy Reagan, the continued progress and prosperity of the people of the United States, the establishment of peace, stability, and justice throughout the world, to the health and happiness of all friends, ladies and gentlemen who are present here tonight, and finally, the continuing friendship between Pakistan and the United States of America. I thank you.
talented flutist, but she is also a writer and is the music commentator on the CBS Sunday Morning News. Her husband, Pincus, is internationally known as a violinist, has won a great many honors, and more recently has won Grammys awards in 1980 and 81. I remember those as good years. <laughs> Krugar, pianist here, is widely known for his talent. He is a composer, a conductor, and as we have heard and seen tonight, a performer. And I think I speak for all of you when I say we're very grateful for these three for sharing their talent with us here tonight. Very good. <laughs>